Hello, I'm Richard Raffin. Uh, in this video I set out to make one of these. Uh, I had a pair of blanks like this, uh, pretty much the same size. Um, unfortunately the first blank let me down. Um, there was a little bit of rot near the rim and uh, I just couldn't get what I wanted to out of the blank. Uh, it got thinner and thinner uh, and I ended up with this very nice little plate. I thought of turning it into a lid on the way uh, didn't quite think it through, but anyway, I ended up with a plate. Um, I was tempted to trash the whole video, uh, but I think there's some useful stuff in here. Um, so I hope you enjoy the journey I had. I have a commission to make a box similar to this. Uh, this, uh, in fact, has a bit of history. It's the first kind of major project I ever tackled. Um, it was made in April 1970 uh, for my mother's birthday and it's made of walnut. It is uh, around 8 inches diameter which is 200 millimeters and pretty much uh, I think 2.5 inches high here yeah, which is uh, around 60 millimeters. Now the concept is to have a continuous curve here uh, out of which I've taken a, a kind of bite uh, so that I can get my fingers round as you saw on here. Now the nearest I could get to the wood and the commission involved using Australian timbers uh, I've got this bit of Tasmanian eucalypt bowl uh, it's well dried uh, this is part of the batch of blanks I got which I know to be at least 10 years old, it might be well more than that. Um, I've found center and drilled uh, a couple of holes so it can go on to uh, what you can just see up here, which is some shark jaws. So, well, we'll see how we go with this one. Uh, the two very much the same, so it doesn't matter which goes on the bottom. This is maybe slightly thinner, so. That's the lid, bottom first, so going on to some shark jaws. This hole is around uh, two and a quarter inches. I'm not sure if it's metric or imperial. <coughs> Don't need all that rest. So six inch one should do it here. No, first job always is to just true the piece up. And don't go racing off the end because that will spin to the end grain. Use the right wing just to ease that in on the top edge. So I know how much thickness I have to play with. Right, there's still a little bit to go there, about a millimetre. Feel smooth. Right across the bottom, same thing. is going on to a small foot so this will be uh, this these are set to uh, the step jaws make a mark with the left that so lines up with the right yeah now I'll get my curve done on the side here just rough it out to start with Looking at something which is going to just be nice and round all the way. Just come in here with a 
scrape, I think, can be a little more accurate and it does produce a very nice clean surface by the feel of it. Yep. Straight in on the line, tools right on its side, bevel lined up where I want to go, which is straight in. Raise the handle to pivot the edge in. Press comes up a bit, so the tool tilted down, working on the flat surface. You see a little bit of white came off there, which would be wax off the uh, original ceiling. A bit more. Yeah, still a little bit left there. foot. If I don't like it later, I can take it off. I'm just going to take some of this out there. Just give the bowl a little bit more kind of uh, visual lift. That's it, pretty for sanding. 180 grit. Two forty grits. All, right, the all which is going on is uh, the rice bran oil, which is what I'm using at the moment, and that will get mixed in with beeswax, which is already on this uh, rag. Don't put a lump of wax up against the wood because there are little fissures in there and the wax will just catch in and not look very nice. And bit difficult to get out. Just shy of that one. And uh, take it out with the half inch spindle guard.
want this rim tilted in very slightly. right in there so turn that up a little bit Three sixteenths. Uh, five millimeters. So I can take a teeny bit more out, and that'll be. So at the moment, I can feel a slight lump in the middle. And unfortunately, that picked out. Uh, but that's well. That's part of. Part of the attraction, I suppose. Going across the bottom, we're going to use the, the shear scraper, which has a shallow radius. Shallow curve. Sanded with 180 grit on the disc. The advantage of using the power sander is that I can control the thickness better in the center. To 40 grit. faster than the rest so that must be a lot softer so my decision here is do I take that down or do I have a little kind of bead on the top which can kind of cope with that and I think that's the way I'm going to go with it try and hide it I'm going to take that edge down 
find the lowest part, which is up there. Not very much to come. I'm going to shear scrape it. like that so we'll try the gouge little arcing cuts sounds better substantially thinner just there and there really isn't very much I can do about that that's it's just the softer bit of rot in the wood well, not really rot, just substantially and every time I touch this edge, even though it's with 240 grit going to distort the rim. It's already down, sanded down again. Ah, right. Quite sure what I'm going to do with this because that rot, that's I think where it's probably where it stops. Just have to see what I've got left. stage you start to wish that um, it has kept the original blank hole. Because uh, this would have been halfway up a bowl wall had I turned a single bowl. Right, so what's going to happen now is uh, I'm thinking of turning this into a lid. which will fit into the uh, into the base. Well, uh, anyway, I'll, yes, I'll sort that out a bit later. So I need a way of expanding inside here. I need a little decorative something just to for the jaws to expand into. Use these jaws. a bit sharper so you hone the edge you don't push hard against the wood sneak in under there with a skew finish it or just see if it fits. Yep. But of course I won't have anything to grip with a lid. What am I going to do? Yeah, just uh, if I can go back, it's just going to be a very nice thin little dish. Half inch spindle gouge.
it, I can't see a hole through it. Right, so I've still got that little line, and that I think will go with power sanding. So this is with 180 grit. lump in the middle or a hump there should we say bit of blue uh, 240 grit Ended up with a little burr plate. And the oil gets into all the pores, and then when I switch the lathe on, uh, centrifugal force will spin spin it out of the cavities. Well, oh, not what I set out to make, but a pretty nice little plate. The height of the foot is barely two millimeters. 